So, so um, I met with you separately to hear each of you. And that's normally what I do at first is I meet with you separately and say, hey, what was, what's going on? Tell me your story. So what was that like for you, just meeting with me individually? Mm -hmm. Tim? Well, it was helpful just to, first of all, it was a relief to be able to talk about it in a very safe environment. Mm -hmm. And you asked a number of questions to just become familiar with the situation. And so the initial meeting of just you and I talking, I really felt like I had the liberty to just talk about it and yeah. I could be honest <clears throat> and you know, answer questions and explore what was going on in me. And mm -hmm. I, I remember even after the very first uh, four, three or four minutes of talking, you said, I think you just learned about 20 years worth of ministry experience. You know, I yeah. still remember that yeah. because yeah. you just, it, it was, it was good for me to be able to talk to someone that was outside of the situation, but was really listening well. Right. Right. And Ross, what about you? You met, I went with you. What was that like for you? Yeah. Um, it was terrifying. Uh, I, I, I'm terrified. I, I, yeah, yeah, and you're like a kind person. I knew who you were, but I never going in there thinking, okay, Dave, I'm gonna, I wanted to kind of like give my side of the story, and Dave's gonna say at the end, you're an idiot. You should have never left, you know. <laughs> but yet, like, uh, you you listened. You didn't judge. Mm -hmm. You just heard mm -hmm. and you listened. And that's when you talked about, you know, I think you should go through the ladder of integrity. Yeah. So let me, for our viewers, let me explain the ladder of integrity for a moment and just, just to help them understand the process. So a ladder of integrity is something that I use in ministry uh, mediation. And it's really a tool that is designed to help people clarify what values they have and how the values have been violated. Because each of you had vi violated each other's values, right? You've been offended by each other. But the thing is, you don't really realize it. So the ladder of integrity helps you get in touch with that. So it also takes you through a process of steps and it gives you language to talk to each other. So instead of you starting out by saying, let me tell you why you offended me and here's what you did wrong, you start out in a much more calm way and you say something like, hey, the issue on my mind right now is the conflict that we've been having. And so that softens a little mm -hmm. bit the, the interaction, but it also pre prepares you to communicate honestly and communicate really well. Mm -hmm. Now, what I, what I do is I have each party do their own ladder of integrity, and then I meet with each party separately and I teach them some big skill that a lot of people don't know what it is. Do you know what the skill is? Listening, mm -hmm. right? Most people don't know how to really listen, actively listen and get the other person's side. You don't have to agree, but you have to get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. So all, all behavior makes sense when you understand context. Mm -hmm. And that's a key thing mm -hmm. because when you start to do a ladder of integrity and you hear the other person's perspective, you go, oh, that makes sense now. Mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes total sense that you felt like that. It makes total sense you felt like that, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you don't have to agree on the facts necessarily, but that help, that's, another, that's another part of it. And um, instead of just blaming each other and pointing out your fault, the ladder of integrity also has a, a section where you say my part in this has been mm -hmm. and i want you to read mm -hmm. each of your sections of my part just to give our our viewers an understanding of that section because it, you know most of the time when we're in conflict we want to point to the other person mm -hmm. and even if the other person's 95 percent at fault there we always have a part there's always something that we've done to contribute so um Ross, you want to you want to start with my part in this has been Sounds even good. though even though you felt really offended, mm -hmm. right? By Tim, mm -hmm. just read slowly for us my part in this. Yeah, my part in this is at times I was not honest with you about how I was feeling over the course of the relationship. There were times that I didn't really stand up for myself or express myself to you honestly. For example, the adult discipleship committee meeting, I should have pulled you aside during the meeting to talk about what was happening. Or the next Friday, when I confronted you in your office, I could have pressed in when I didn't hear you apologize, but did not think it was really an authentic apology. Mm -hmm. Or when I felt you were not answering the questions I was asking you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get to be honest. Mm -hmm. And even though he, Tim really offended you by cross-examining you and speaking harshly, you're recognizing that, gosh, I could have mm -hmm. done this. There was a part that I played here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And had I maybe pushed in and said, hey, Tim, can I... Can I help you understand how that hurt me? Mm -hmm. That would have taken taken, you know, the air out of the 
era, the mm-hmm. balloon, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so Tim, yeah. you had your part. So what, how did, what did you say in your ladder of integrity? My part in this is that I hurt you through my actions, which induced growing distrust. Mm. I was uh, over eager in not respecting your request for postponement in April. Mm-hmm. Um, I was driven toward improving the quality of our ministry uh, in my eyes without really taking time to clarify what that meant to you, Ross. Mm-hmm. Um, I avoided talking about the bigger picture, about like whether the missional community model and the coaching resources that we had acquired were really truly a good fit for us in that season. Mm-hmm. And then also my part of this was that I expressed anger and criticism toward you in that meeting and um, didn't apologize afterward. So it, during the mediation for both of you, what was it like for you to say that section, you know, my part in this or, or just to even read the latter? What was that like? I think one of the things that I realized that I, that I the way I looked at forgiveness in the past was that sense of you know like hey like you did this to me uh, you're terrible but I forgive you uh huh um, but with a lot of integrity it was this kind of like hey we had conflict and you did hurt me but here's all the things that I brought to the table mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it was good for me to like really kind of see what it was what are the values that I was bringing to the table what was the, my history that was mm-hmm. I was bringing to the table yeah is really helpful for me to kind of like mm-hmm. to think through that a little mm-hmm. bit more mm-hmm. how about for you Tim I felt like the letter of integrity helped me to really speak with a lot of clarity toward Ross but from a position of <clears throat> my own my own stuff, you mm-hmm. know, out of yeah. integrity. Yeah. And it forced me as well to reflect on the things that I had to take responsibility for in the conflict and really put the spotlight for myself on me. Right. And um, it was hard work, but it was really <coughs> worth it and very fruitful. Yeah. So one of the things that I love about the mediation process is that we don't gloss over the problems. We don't mm-hmm. just smooth them over, sweep them under the rug. Yeah. And we don't gloss over feelings of anger or pain or the or you know the the facts, right? We don't we're not trying to make nice. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. we're trying to do is get to the heart of the issues. Mm-hmm. And um, as I said before, all behavior makes sense when you understand the context, right? Mm-hmm. So another section of the ladder of integrity, which I, I I think is is sort of revealing, is the section where you where you Ross talked about you know some of your 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 stuff and as to why you didn't approach. Tim, why you didn't push in and say, hey, wait, you offended me. I need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're not making excuses here, but it's a way of understanding. Yeah. You want to read that section if you would. The behavior you see in me as a result of this is that I tend to avoid conflict mm-hmm. and I have a tendency to move on from relationships without resolving the problems or issues. This is a pattern I learned early in life. I have felt overlooked and sometimes not respected over the course of my life. I did, I did not learn to address things directly, but developed a pattern of overlooking conflict. Mm. Um, conflict was never really modeled when I was younger. And then when I was in college, I learned it was easier to move on from relationships when I thought they would get hard. So the behavior you experienced from me was my conflict avoidance and my sensitivity to feeling overlooked and disrespected. Therefore, what you saw in me was freezing or withdrawing. In the adult discipleship meeting, I froze and broke eye contact until the conflict was over. I didn't want to deal with it. I was angry, but I didn't know how to respond right there. In other instances, I didn't know how to respond when I felt ignored. Sometimes I would say something, but it felt too difficult to get full closure. Mm -hmm. I moved on too quickly, and sometimes I did not say or do anything to let you know how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And, and so one of the things that I think is important for people to realize and what I love, again, about this, this process is that <clears throat> we take what we learn from our families of origin. Mm-hmm. We bring mm-hmm. them into the family of God mm-hmm. and, we, and we, try to, you know, we try to just act the way we did back before Christ, mm-hmm. right, in our families of origin. Mm-hmm. And that way we, we just sort of perpetuate problems. We don't mm-hmm. learn conflict resolution. If your parents didn't do it or your, you know, your family of origin, so why would you? Why would you know? And so you just look back on your life and you say, hey, there's a pattern for me that when I have conflict, I move on. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you were doing here. Yeah. So one of the discipleship mm-hmm. issues here and one of the sanctification issues here is that we learn, wait, we don't do it just like we did it before. We try to do, do it in a more godly way mm-hmm. in the family of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. 
yeah, I, thank you for, for sharing that. Yes. Did you want to comment yeah, on that? Yeah, let me, let me jump in on like my experience too. Yeah. Because I, I experienced something different, but just from a different side of my own experience and my own um, weaknesses as a sinner as well. Mm -hmm. One of my weaknesses is uh, just trying to please other people. There you go. And I wanted Ross to be happy. And so even when we were making some of the tough, very critical decisions early on in the ministry, and I knew Ross wanted to do it a certain way, mm -hmm. I tended to favor Ross's way of doing it, mm. even if inside I had a gut check. Okay. And I just kind of thought it's better to have Ross and a, the model that Ross wants than the model I want without Ross. Mm. Right. But in the end, that proved fatal because the truth had to come out, right? There, there, there wasn't a perfect alignment in the ministry model and coaching we'd chosen yeah. um, yeah. in our context. And so, because I, but the irony is, because I wanted to please Ross, I ended up not pleasing Ross. Yes. And not pleasing myself. Right, right. And the letter of integrity forced me to look deep into that process as a leader mm -hmm. and think about like, what did I do? What was my part? And my part was, pretty far upstream, mm -hmm. but then it, it had residual effects yeah. As, yeah. The, as the relationship and as the process went forward. Right. And that, that, the letter of integrity f like really helped me to be vulnerable about those things that I had done that were sinful as well. Right. I'm so glad you raised that because it, it, these are such important points. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, one of the things that you said, one of the things this does is it helps you identify your own core stuff. Mm -hmm. So like you, Ross, were saying like, you know, I, I'm a conflict avoider. Mm -hmm. And you're saying I'm a people pleaser, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so that people pleasing manifests itself all over the place. If, if we have a core issue, it's going to leak mm -hmm. out, right? So what you said was really important. I think I want everybody to understand that. Early on when you were planning missional communities, you were sort of swallowing hard when Ross was going in a direction. Mm -hmm. But you, I, I need to keep him on board. It's better to have him on board yeah. and happy than have him leave, mm -hmm. right? But that was like a seed of the, that was the seed of destruction. That's because, right. Yeah. Right. And it was very, very close. I mean, like we're talking about nuance in ministry. Sure. And if you've been in ministry for a while, you know that like some little perspectives can be really big down That's the right. road. That's right. And so I just underestimated the severity of that moment. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, but now you have enough humility as you look back on it and you go through this mediation process, you go, okay, this was part, this is part uh -huh. of what, yeah. what I'm learning here. And I, I just love the fact that, you know, you think about the lessons you're learning mm -hmm. and how you take that now into the next 20, 30, 40 years of ministry, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? So the seeds of destruction also become <laughs> the seeds of redemption, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Dave, that's um, even like avoiding conflict. Uh, I work very closely with my wife as I like kind of helped, she helped me write the letter of integrity. Yeah. And there's a lot of aha moments, not just with like, it, it's not like I just avoided conflict with Tim. Tim. But mm -hmm. my wife, and she's awesome, but yeah. she was like, yeah, uh, by the way, like this happens with us all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize like, oh, this is a pattern, not just with Tim, but with many mm -hmm. relationships in my life. Right. Right. So, yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I think that's where it gets real, right? Because when we lean into the things that break and we see, like we, we're willing to be humble and go back and say, well, why did that break? Right. It shows right. us our brokenness. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what sanctification is about. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you've got to be willing to own the stuff you're carrying yeah yeah and if you just gloss over things you miss the opportunity to do some self-disclosure and exactly self-assessment right. and bring exactly. that back to the cross yeah and see and see the shame of it is like let's just say you guys had decided we're not doing mediation we're not going to mm -hmm. reconcile we're okay we're fine yeah. right mm -hmm. you would have carried with you conflict avoidance into your next church into your next into your family mm -hmm. you wouldn't be mm -hmm. aware of it you would have carried the people pleasing thing mm -hmm. again and again and again that's why this is so redemptive. That's mm -hmm. why I'm so excited about you guys and what you what you're willing to talk about and and just mm -hmm. just do this, right? Yeah. So let's wrap up by just talking a, a little bit about some of the lessons learned. You know, you just mentioned a couple. Um, how did the, how has this made a difference in terms of your relationship mm -hmm. with each other? After we were done with the mediation process, we actually got together, um, my wife and I, and Tim and Sarah. We got, we had lunch and spent, gosh, mm. like two or three hours just <laughs> yeah. building the, on, upon the relationship again, uh, which is great. Uh, it, in fact, it's funny, uh, uh, you know, it's been a joy to kind of work on this project together. And obviously, the conflict still came up, 
but I feel like we had the tools to kind of like mm. work it out and figure mm-hmm. out the solutions to it in a way that was uh, honest. I didn't like back down. Um, right. We mm-hmm. like, instead of just mm-hmm. heating people, please, I didn't like, mm-hmm. I didn't avoid conflict. Didn't avoid- and we like kind of figured it out. And it, was, <laughs> it was great. It was a yeah. good process. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Tim? Um, I think, first of all, this is just important because I view Ross as a friend, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, I realized pretty quickly uh, after the, the announcement that they were going to leave that that was final. It wasn't, I couldn't change that. Right. And there wouldn't necessarily be a renewal of ministry again like it had been, but we could work on our friendship still. Mm-hmm. And this gave us the platform to, to bring about that reconciliation. Right. Even, even if it wouldn't totally restore <clears throat> the ministry that we shared, mm-hmm. we could at least uh, we could reconcile in our relationship and yeah. we could feel comfortable seeing each other in public and in all kinds yeah. of environments as opposed to like avoiding each other yeah. at the store or something like that, you know? Right. We didn't want to do that. Right. We wanted to right. be able to talk and share life again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how about organizationally for you both? You know, you, but you both are working in ministries. How, does, how would you say that would affect you now as you've been through this mediation process? Mm-hmm. For me, uh, it was effective because it helped me to look at myself as a leader mm-hmm. and the ways that I was engaging. Like Because I was people-pleasing, that was causing problems in the process of leading in ministry and right. sharing relationship. Mm-hmm. And so getting back to some of those core issues in me uh, helps me move forward as a better leader, and mm-hmm. that was essential. How about for you, Ross? Yeah, uh, organizationally, you know, coming out of it, I've definitely been telling, you know, I'm not a pastor of a church. But, you know, like to come out of it, I'm at a new church. This is one of the things I talk about often mm. is this mediation process, the lot of integrity. Mm. Um, you know, the way that I did conflict before would be like a doctor, you know, trying to clean out an infection and going like halfway down and going, okay, this is going to hurt the patient too much. Mm. Let's just kind of like, we're just, we're just, we'll finish there. The infection's still there. It's going to get worse, right. but I don't want to hurt them too much. Um, I kind of said like it's like the, it's like it's like wounds over you know or it's like it bandages over like a, it's still a bad wound right right it never disappeared right it, so so in other words it's painful yeah to go after the infection mm-hmm. but it's best yeah and then the wound heals mm-hmm. and it's, it even can be stronger yeah yeah oh yeah yeah um, but the other thing that I've been able to communicate to people is um, and you know as we've all kind of dealt with like COVID nineteen and the coronavirus yeah. is to stop. I, in, my, in my own life, I may feel like, man, there's something not right with Tim and I or someone else, but oftentimes I'm so busy helping or so busy being the life of the party or so busy doing something right. that I don't actually really check myself of like, okay, what's going on in life? Mm-hmm. And the, the time to just slow down and kind of figure out where am I at with so-and-so or where am I at with this person or where am I at with just myself? Um, the ladder integrity really helps you to slow down because it takes time mm-hmm. to kind of figure out, okay, what am I bringing to this? What are my values? Um, what am I contributing to this conflict? Mm-hmm. And what is the conflict in, in, right. all, in all honesty? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So if you knew your friends or other church members were having conflict, what would you recommend to them with respect to a mediation process? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you... <clears throat> I think people fear a mediation process because they think they're going to get back in the ring with the person yeah. and that the mediator is going to be some kind of referee. You know, and mm-hmm. you said that and then what, how'd they feel, you know? <laughs> but this was a lot, right. it was very different. Mm-hmm. It was a process where we, we actually looked inside of ourselves and then expressed ourselves with integrity to other people, mm-hmm. to the, the person that we were in conflict with. And yeah. it's, it, I'd highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Great. So I want to thank you both. You you both been extraordinarily brave. You know, most pastors and leaders don't get up in front of the church or go on, uh, you know, on YouTube and and tell an issue, right? But you have been vulnerable. You've been brave. You've been humble, and I think you've given a huge gift to the church. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate you both doing this. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Right. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome, and thank you for your part. Yeah. We appreciate your role. Thanks, Dave. Yeah.